Well, I only thought I was done with the insanity for today, but this will be the last one. I'm going to go try and get some work now. But Ocasio-Cortez is now accusing Republican lawmakers of, and I quote, killing women and pregnant people. During this entire story, she talks about how she has to explain biology 101 when she talked about Greg Abbott in invoking a six-week abortion ban. First of all, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, women and pregnant people, not two different things. Only women can get pregnant. Even though Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown said that she's not a biologist when asked to define woman, woman is the opposite of man. There are two genders. There are two biological sexes. You are born male or female, XX or XY. There is no other option. No matter how much you want to support the people who identify as transgendered, pantheistic, Martian cats, that's not a thing. You're born male or you're born female. Bruce Jenner was born male. Bruce Jenner, biologically and chemically on the inside, is still male. Jenner cannot get pregnant, cannot bear children, could not if Jenner was still 20 years old. Because the male body cannot produce the chemicals or the hormones needed for the child to grow in the womb. The male body does not have a uterus or a womb or a cervix. The male hips cannot spread the way female hips can to give birth. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you transition male to female. Inside, as I've said in a, in a few ways before, all the gooey bits on the inside, still male. Just because you have the physical appearance of a female doesn't make you female. Moving on. She then goes on to like a six-week abortion to being two weeks late for your period. Not the same thing. Not the same thing at all. You see, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, for someone who is just two weeks late for their period, they're just two weeks late. They're not pregnant. And here is a better way of explaining it than you did. You likened it to stress or other things in life that can cause a woman's biological cycle, her menstrual cycle, to be late. Let's look at an example in modern pop culture. Modern is a loose term here. The movie G.I. Jane with Demi Moore. In this movie, Demi Moore's character decides that she wants to become a Navy SEAL. She will be a test case sponsored by a member of Congress. During the movie, her character sheds a lot of body fat and starts to gain muscle, and so on. At one point, her doctor tells her that it is not uncommon for female athletes when doing this to simply not menstruate. That is the more common. But here's the other part of it. If you are undergoing so much stress from your job, not being able to pay your bills, your family is not doing well, your parents are sick, so on and so forth. If you have so much stress in your life that you don't menstruate, I'm going to be betting that you're not going to think you're pregnant because you're probably not in the best of health yourself. That level of stress causes things like nausea, migraine headaches, muscle aches, so on and so forth. I happen to know someone who, not long after high school, due to taking on more than any one person should in college, had all of those things happen. To the point her doctor told her the same thing my doctor would tell me a good 10 years later. Lighten the load or I'm putting you in the hospital. For her, it was just physically everything. Migraines, nausea, couldn't eat couldn't keep water down, not menstruating, all of it. The doctor told her, 24 hours a semester, plus 14 full time, plus everything else, you're killing yourself. You're not allowed to take more than 12 hours per semester, and you're allowed to work half time. 
you want to work full time, you're going to go down to six hours a semester. She argued, but eventually he told her, no, I'll put you in the hospital against your will. For me, I simply was sleeping. I was taking 12 hours a semester and working an overnight shift. Problem is, once you get into the later years of college, it doesn't really work. So both of us decided to listen to our doctors, and amazingly, our health got better. She began to menstruate. I began to be able to sleep. Here's the other part of it, though. I don't know of a single person who, if a medical doctor said, if I don't do this procedure, this woman will die. I don't know a single person on this planet who would say, nope, it's illegal, let her die. Christina Lim, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, Greg Abbott. I don't know if any of them would do anything other than say, doctor, save her life. Liberals like to jump to hyperbolic and emotional things. They're just not willing to listen to the science, the science, the science. This coming from people who believe you can change your gender day to day. People who believe that the vaccine was the most evil thing possible and they would never take it when it was Trump in office. But it magically was transformed out of the ether by no one doing a damn thing once Biden won and Biden started telling them to take it. People who believe, my body, my choice, when it comes to abortion, but your body, my choice, when it comes to vaccines. You should lose your job and have your children taken from you. It is rather simple. The extreme vast majority of abortion is for convenience. It's not to save the mother's life. It's not due to rape or incest or any of those things in most cases. In fact, rape, incest, save the life, less than 25 to 3%. Of all of them, the extreme vast majority, convenience. I just don't want to be pregnant. I can guarantee Ms. Ocasio-Cortez will not even acknowledge the statements that Ana Navarro-Cardenas had to say, where she brought up her autistic brother and her Down syndrome step-grandchild as reasons we need abortion. Literally defending the eugenics. Literally saying, if the child is defective in any way, don't even allow them to be born. All I have to say to Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, Ms. Navarro Cardenas, and anyone else who supports abortion in any way, there will come a day when every single person on this planet who is alive, ever was alive, or ever will be alive, save one, will meet the creator of all things, God himself. Christ will be at his right hand. And we will all have to answer for our lives, for our choices, for our words, for our actions. People like Navarro, Ocasio-Cortez, Pelosi, Waters, Schumer, Biden, Harris, and so many more. Well, they will be so adamant that their works to defend the right to abortion and to strip people of other rights because they don't understand things. Their work to rule the world as tyrants means they should get to go to heaven because they were the only ones who knew how to run people's lives. No one else was smart enough. When it's my turn, I will simply kneel before the Creator. And when asked why he should let me into heaven, I'll simply say, your son died on the cross. and paid for everything. I will be ushered into the gates of heaven as people who today vehemently defend the murder of the unborn for the sake of convenience while lying about it will be wailing and gnashing their teeth as they're sent to hell. And that will not be a a day when anyone laughs or claps or rejoices. We will all be sad to see someone sent to hell, that we have all done everything we can to enlighten. I have never hidden my faith. And I really do hope Ms. Ocasio-Cortez and Ms. Navarro Cardenas sees this, because quite simply, both of them profess to be Christians. 
practicing Catholics. But from everything I have read and everything I know about Catholicism, that belief is I can do whatever I want. As long as I go to my priest and my priest says I'm forgiven and I eat a bit of cracker and drink a bit of wine, then I'm forgiven and I can go to heaven without ever repenting. You, you see, their confession is, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have done this, that, and the other. And generally, the priest will tell them to do a certain thing. Say the Hail Mary 12 times. It's not how it works. Not at all. This is a throwback to the Abrahamic times when you had the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle where only the priests could enter. People would bring their sacrifices, their unblemished lamb, and their, the blood would be shed and taken and sacrificed for the sins of that person. And they had to do this regularly. But at Calvary, on Golgotha, Christ died the most perfect sacrifice. Fully God, fully man, he died on that cross for all of us to end this ritual sacrifice, to end all of it, to fulfill the law. Yet today we have people who say, no, you don't go to God in prayer. You come to me, tell me what you've done, and I'll tell you what you must do to be forgiven. Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Not through your priest, not through your cardinal, not through your rabbi or your imam or your pastor or your children's minister or any of it. I don't go to a person when I confess my sins. I go to Christ. I directly approach God. And that's what he told us to do. And quite frankly, if all I did was say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, or bless me, not Lord, for I have sinned, but I kept doing it. I'm not repenting. And no, receiving the Eucharist does not magically cleanse you. There are going to be a lot of people who profess to be Christians who, on the Day of Judgment, will be horribly, horribly confused as they are not allowed into heaven. And even if God himself says, you supported the wholesale slaughter of the unborn, those I created specifically, and you killed them before they could be born, people like AOC and Navarro and the rest, but they weren't alive. They were just a clump of cells. And God himself could stand there and say, no, they weren't. And AOC and the rest would just never get it. All we can do is pray that one day they'll wake up. If you are someone who has the ability to actually speak to those people, do so. Try desperately to wake them up. Witness to them. Minister to them. Because at the end of the day, it is on us to spread the gospel. And it is on us to call out all the lies, to spread the truth, and quite frankly to work to stop the wholesale slaughter of the unborn, the trafficking of the innocent, and so much more. I hope all of you have a wonderful week. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comments, but do remember to keep it civil. We're here to discuss, dissent, and debate, not to argue like toddlers. Also, make sure that you are subscribed, notifications turned on, so that you are aware every time I post. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and God bless.